In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this athlete profile radar chart where you will be able to select the testing date as well as the athlete and have the chart automatically update to show that athlete's values versus the team average. This is going to be a really powerful way to display athlete testing data and create a profile for athletes that they can use to compare themselves versus the rest of the team. So let's get after it. Okay, so this is the sheet that we're going to be working with. And to orient you to the sheet, what we have on the left-hand side here is athlete testing data from different dates, as well as we have a bench press, trap bar, squat, and counter movement jump score for that athlete on that date. So in order to begin this project, um, one of the first things we need to do is just create our drop-down menu so that we can select the athlete and the date that we want to look at. So easy way to do this, we'll just select a box here. Um, I usually just signify a drop-down menu by a date and an arrow or something to signify that this is going to be a drop-down menu. And we will go to data and then data validation. The Google Sheets data validation has changed a little bit, so it opens up a box here on the right-hand side. We will go to add rule and it's going to give us our range. Um, I'm going to select drop-down from a range and then the range that I actually want because this is the date, we will take basically B2 all the way to B. And then um, under advanced options, I like to put it as the old sort of drop down menu, but you can do a chip if you want. And a chip basically creates this um, little card inside of the cell. Um, but I, I prefer the old drop down menu style where it just puts the value rate in the cell. And then we are done there. Um, the cool thing about Google Sheets drop down menus is it automatically filters um, for unique values for you. So, I mean, I have several dates of 2022-0101, but it's only going to allow me to choose one version of that, and it will basically work for all of them. Um, then for the athlete name, we'll basically do the same thing. So we can go to add rule, drop down from range, select our range. Again, it's going to be A2 all the way down to A. We select A2 because we don't want to include the headers. Um, advanced options, and then we will add our arrow and hit enter. So that's how we do that quick part. So we just go to data, data validation, and we can create our rules. Um, the next thing we'll do is we'll actually add the same sort of thing for our test names. So if I go to add rule one more time, we'll go to drop down from range. Now the range will be the test headers. So bench press, trap bar, deadlift, squat, and counter movement jump. And I'll hit okay there. Um, again, I'm going to choose arrow and hit done. So now we are able to actually choose our different tests. And this could be as many tests as you want. I'm demonstrating it with four, um, but we could really choose as many tests as we want. So from there, what I'd like to do is whenever we want to make a chart of some sort, it's a good idea to pull out all of your values in a nice little table. And then we use that to actually format our chart. So the first thing we're going to do is pull out the 1RM value and how to do that, we're going to use the filter function. So I'm going to type equals um, filter, open that up and it's going to ask me for the range that I want. So I'm going to use an index and match to determine the range. So I'll say index, open that up. It's going to ask for the reference. In this case, the reference is going to be all of our data. So from there, comma, it's going to ask me for the row. I don't want to signify a row here because um, we are actually looking for a column of data. We're looking for, in this case, the bench press column. Comma, match. I am going to match for the word bench press here stored in H4. Comma, where do I want to look for it? I want to look for it from A1 all the way to F1. So it's going to go across here and say, is this bench press? No. Is this bench press? No. So on and so forth until it gets to the third column and it's going to return the number three and then comma false because we want an exact match. So that is going to be the range that I want to return. Now that we have the range, when do we want to do it? Well, we have two sets of criteria here. So the first one we want to do is when this first um, column is equal to the athlete name that we've chosen. So A to A is equal to I2. 
And what that will do is return all of the um, instances of bench press where athlete two is the athlete and to filter it down even more because I know that I only have one variable for each date. The next thing we want to match on is when the date is equal to the date selected. When I close this off, um, I have to make sure that I close off all of my cells. I sometimes leave this match open. We need a double close there and I hit enter. It's going to give me a value of 132. So let's check this. We'll pick the first date and the first athlete and it should be a value of 134 because it goes across, finds the third column and then the athlete and the date is 134. So we know that this formula is working correctly. Now, there's a couple things in this formula. I know that this range is never going to change, so I will lock in this range with dollar signs. Um, this is going to change, however. Um, it will always be stored in H, but it will change um, the row as we drag this formula. If I come down, it will go to H5, H6, H7, and so on and so forth. This header is not going to change, so we can lock that in with dollar signs. My row A to A won't change, and where I store those values won't change, so we can lock all of these in with dollar signs. I'm going to hit enter. It won't change our formula, but now because we've left where we're looking for the variable open, if I drag this down, it will automatically give me my values, 197, 253, and 15. So that's part one. We've now filtered out the variables that we're looking for. Now from there, what we actually want to do is calculate our percent rank. So I'm going to co copy this whole formula because this will be the base formula that we use for a lot of these um, formulas. And what I'll do is equals percent rank, open this up, and I'll open this up so we can see what it's gonna ask me for. The first thing it's going to ask me for is the data. Well, I'm going to paste that back in there. And now, instead of looking for when the date is equal to the one we selected and the um, athlete is equal to the name, we don't have to do that anymore. What we want to look for is when the athlete name is not blank. And basically what that will do is return all of the data um, from the bench press column that has an athlete name of not blank, meaning all of the data that's entered because it's asking us for all the data. And then in order to calculate the percent rank, it needs the value of the one that we have calculated. So basically what this formula is doing, going through and pulling out all of the data based on that filter function that we've already written, and then um, doing a percent rank on the 1RM value that we've already pulled out. It's going to give us a value of 0.339, and I want that to look a little bit better, so I'm just going to multiply that by 100 to make it 33.9. When I hit enter, if I hit autofill, it will fill all of them all the way down. And to make sure that this is working properly, what we can do is actually search through different athletes and make sure that all the valuable values work. Um, now from there, we can do the team average version of this formula. And it really looks very similar. If I um, take this whole thing and copy it one more time, it's going to pull out all of the data, but now our value that we want to create a rank on is not I4, it is an average of the whole thing. So we just put average around that formula, and essentially what this is doing now, it pulls out all of the values that we're looking for, and then it takes the average of them as the value that we are calculating the percent rank for, and when we hit enter, it's going to give us a value of 50.3. So if you see, once you've built out one of the formulas, we can reuse that formula again and again and just change the things that we're actually matching for in order to fit our needs. So now from here, what we can do is I can um, select exercise all the way down, hold down control, and select all of my percentiles. And what I'm gonna do is go to insert, insert a chart and it's going to give me this bar looking chart and we could use this this kind of gives us an idea of 
our value versus the team average. And this is a great chart we might be able to use. I personally like sort of a radar plot in this situation. And I'm going to show you a few ways to make it look just a little bit better. So the first thing we'll do is I'm just going to remove these um, automatic titles that it puts on there of exercise and percentile just because the exercise is already noted in the chart and the percentile is um, the measurement that we're using. So it's a given. And from here, we'll play around with a couple of the options for this chart. If I double click on it, it opens up this bar on the right hand side. So under chart style, I personally like to do it um, not smooth so that it shows um, specific lines to where we're trying to go to. And then for these types of charts, I like to maximize them um, so that this chart becomes as big as possible. Under um, series, we'll go to our series. I like when the series is our darker colors and I like to apply a marker when it is the athlete's actual values. One thing you might wanna do is you could do a dotted line or a semi dotted line, um, but I think for the athlete values, we'll keep that as a, um, a solid line. And then from there, we can go down to grid lines and ticks. We'll choose the vertical axis. We will make it black so that it shows up a little bit better. And then under count, we'll just make it one and that removes all of the lines in the background. And I just personally think that that looks kind of the best um, for our chart. So now one last thing that we might want to do to this chart is just add our team averages in. And to do that, what I can do is just go to setup and then add series. And I'm going to select that team average series, um, basically from K3 all the way to K7, hit enter, and it will put that series on our chart. If I go to customize, I like to change the color of this series. I think it helps it look a little bit better. So under series, we'll select team average. We'll make it maybe a navy blue, make the line thickness just a little bit bigger, but I will give it sort of a dotted line so that we have a clear representation of where the team average is. And we can see whether the athlete is above or below that average. So this chart should be fully dynamic. So as I switch the athlete to different tests, you will see um, basically that the value changes based on those tests. As well, we can delete a test and then the chart will automatically update to represent the deleted test or we can put it back in. One of the things you will see is, I forget what date it was. Let's just take a look here. Um, if the value is sort of the lowest value in a data set, the percent rank might go to zero. You could easily just add a clause that had plus one at the end, it would give it a value of one. But that is one way that you might want to look at your team data. And I think that these types of radar charts are a great tool for showing athletes how they rank to the team average um, in, a, in a format that they can easily understand. So I hope this video helps you out. If it does, please like and subscribe to the channel and I will um, keep going with more videos and um, please share this with another coach that you think might find it useful. That really helps the channel grow. Thanks for watching.